Hi class, it's Miss Fry again. So I uploaded a video for you to explain the differences between elements of art and principles of design. Now I'm going to walk you through your LEAPS assessment project that you're going to do that's required by TVCC. So many of you will be able to walk through this and be able to understand it, but sometimes people may want to hear it explained and unfortunately that's the downside of it you know, online learning that you don't have that personal interaction. So hopefully that will help you if you need it, or this will help you if you need that. And um, again, if you have questions, I'm gonna show you guys where to put your questions right here, question and answer used throughout the course. So it's gonna be a great resource for you guys. If you have questions, I'm gonna check it often that way all of you could check here if you're not sure what to do to see if someone else has asked the question first, okay? I don't mind answering emails, but I would prefer if it's a general question to go there. If it's personal about your grade or something, that's different. But if it's a general question about the assignment, please put it there. Okay, so let's go to week two. Okay, so I'm going to go down to, I'm going to let you guys go through this part of the module that talks about a formal analysis. And then I'm going to skip down to the formal analysis rough draft. Okay, and this is what you'll see. So you will be writing a formal analysis over an artist's work. You will choose the artwork, but I have assigned you an artist. Okay, so before the class began, I took my list of students and my list of artists and I created a list. So the first thing you'll do is click on this link and you will find your name and you will see what artwork I have assigned to you. Okay, so here it is. You can go to it if this goes too fast and look for yourself. I have, I think, put about an even distribution of male and female artists for you all. Okay, so once you have your artist's name, you'll go to your book and see if your book has an example of art from that artist. Some, um, the more well-known artists should be in your book, but you may have to do an internet search. But please, avoid Pinterest. If you do a, an image search, by that artist's name. If it says Pinterest underneath it, do not click it. It's not gonna take you to a reliable source right away. It may be an artwork inspired by the artist. It may be some kitschy craft that's for kids that has the word Picasso in it and it is not his work. So please do a search. You may try to go to a museum if it says Museum of Modern Art for the source or the Louvre in Paris, all those are going to be very reliable sources. Okay, so try to find a reliable source and then take a look. See what kind of work that artist does. Okay, this is the fun part. Um, kind of do a search and see what really speaks to you. Step two, you're going to open this worksheet. Now, if you can, print this out. I think there's a lot to be said about handwriting notes. Um, if you're just copying and pasting, you're not learning the information. You're just transferring it from one place to another. So print this out, write down the definitions to these four words, okay? If you can't print it, write it anyway, it's okay. And then you'll go to the second part and you will find an artwork Preferably a famous work, just so there's a lot of resources over it, or just one that you really like by that artist, okay? And then answer these five questions. Name the artist, the title, the medium, media. Uh, what is the size, and when was it completed? Another reason it's good to have this printed out is because you can have the image on your computer and then you can write the answers down on the printed worksheet. You don't have to keep going back and forth. Now I want you to circle three dominant elements of art, okay? So let's say color, space, 
and texture are the most dominant elements of art. Okay, and if you're not sure, then you need to revisit last week. You need to look in the book and you need to see what the elements of art are. Choose three. Okay, this is step by step, you guys. Easy stuff. Answer these questions. Write the word color and then write the definition to color. Look in your book, write that definition. And then I want you to find in that chapter over color two other vocabulary words that supports that painting or sculpture. Okay, so let's say that there's bold blues and purples. Okay, don't tell me that there's bold blues, purples, and greens. Tell me that there's bold, cool colors. And those cool colors that the artist used are teal and blue and white. And then they used um, maybe lighter tints in certain areas. Okay, um, maybe there's a repetition of color. So tell me how that artist has used color. Maybe they use an analogous color scheme. So tell me what analogous is and what four colors that support that definition that they used. Or maybe um, they've used a primary or secondary color scheme. So the more vocabulary words you can throw at me with clear evidence in this paper, the better. Okay, so go to element number two. I think I said um, texture, maybe, I'm not sure. So write the word texture, write the definition of texture, and give me two different examples of texture. Okay, is it simulated texture? Is it actual texture? Um, is the texture smooth? Um, tell me about that, okay? And then finally, let's say they used line, write the word line, the definition to line, and then maybe irregular lines it used, or maybe they used um, directional lines like in the Artemisia Cincileschi painting, or perhaps they used irregular lines. Know what those are. So really look at that. Go back in your book and look at other sub um, definitions two lines that are within that chapter that supports your painting. Now I want you to look at the artwork and list, or I'm sorry, circle two dominant principles of design. Okay, perhaps contrast and pattern are the two that are most dominant. You'll write contrast and the definition and then tell me why. Where is contrast in this composition? Okay, is it contrasting in color? Is it contrasting shapes? Is it contrasting values? What's happening? Okay, write pattern in the definition and then give me examples of pattern. Is there a repetition of something that's creating a pattern? Tell me where. And then, based on the question or the answers above, give me some facts or based on the facts, tell me what you think it means, okay? Because of the colors, because of the cool colors, it could mean this, or because of the repetition of pattern or shape, it could possibly mean this, because of the shapes that they used, um, I think it is about that. Um, so tell me what you think the meaning is. Now, you can tell me what you think it is, and then you could also say in your essay what the artist's intention is. Sometimes it's different and that's okay. And then the fourth step to critical analysis is judgment. Do you think it's good? Why or why not? Okay, you can tell me your opinion and then you could tell me maybe what the art world's opinion is. Sometimes that's very different. And answer the last of the questions. Is it an expensive work of art? You may not know. If you are choosing the Mona Lisa, it's not, it hasn't been sold recently. So nobody would know exactly what it would sell for. Um, you could maybe find out what the Louvre in Paris insures it for. 
or you could do a search on The Last Painting Sold by Leonardo da Vinci. And I'll tell you, if you had that artist, the last artwork sold is over $400 million. So you can imagine with a lesser known painting selling for that much what the Mona Lisa may be sold for. So you can write that in your essay um, and give me your opinion what you think the Mona Lisa may be worth, okay? And where is it now? The Mona Lisa is at the Louvre in Paris, where it's more than likely going to stay. It's a crowd pleaser. Most people go to the Louvre to see her, so they're probably not going to sell it. Last is historical context. What art movement or period of art was this artist a part of? Okay. If this artist was al were alive today, what would their work be about? Given the facts about Leonardo da Vinci, Tell me what kind of work you think he would be doing today. Would he be doing commissions? Would he be doing work for private collectors? Would he be doing large-scale sculpture? Would he be doing work about politics or animal cruelty? What do you think his artwork would be about today? Do you think it would be the same? Why or why not? So this worksheet will help you tremendously in the next step, which is to write your uh, rough draft for your essay okay so step three follow this tells you what each paragraph should have paragraph one in your introduction paragraph state what a formal analysis is list the 20 elements and design principles and then the artist title of work and it has to have the medium listed somewhere, so you could put it here. Paragraph two, talk about one element of art in depth. All those questions that you answered from the former worksheet should go here. Element of art number two in paragraph three. Tell me about that. Notice in the actual essay, I'm only wanting you to talk about two of those elements. I had you write three because you might eliminate one. Once you start looking at it, you might be like, oh, that's not really that important of an element. I think these two are more important. So that's why I had you do more in the worksheet than you have to do here. So in the last, I'm sorry, not the last paragraph, the fourth paragraph is discussing one principle of design. Again, I had you list two, but you only have to narrow it down to one. And then in your last paragraph, give me its meaning. Tell me about its value. Maybe conclude with the definition of a formal analysis again and wrap up your essay. So please look at this when you're writing your essay so you make sure that everything is in there. So you'll have um, through next week to write your rough draft. And as you start to turn them in, Canvas should assign you a peer so that you can review their paper and a peer will review yours. Now this is supposed to replace the group component of the LEAPS assessment that you would normally have in a face-to-face -face class. So I tried um, swapping papers in my last internet class and it wasn't very successful. So I'm trying to use this time the Canvas component for the peer review. There is one built into Canvas, so I'm hoping that it works wonderfully. If it doesn't, and it's a disaster, we will work it out together. We do have a very large class, and it has to have this component in it for TVCC, so we will figure it out, okay? But I'm hoping it works out well. So as you turn it in, and more people turn their rough draft in, it should automatically send it to someone. Now, the peer review is specific. There is a specific worksheet to fill it out. So when you receive a rough draft from someone in your class, you are going to fill out this assignment, okay? I have uploaded it in a Word document, so maybe it's easier for you to fill out on the computer, okay? And once it's filled out, you'll return it to your peer. 
so they get the feedback and you'll turn it in to me for a grade. Now just so that we're clear, the rough draft is not a grade, but it must be turned in so that you can receive a peer assignment because it is for a grade. So you'll go through and you'll fill this out after reading your peer's essay and you'll give them feedback. Okay, so this is pretty self-explanatory. Please just read through it carefully and then um, return it to your peer and to me. So you'll be submitting it as an assignment. Okay, and that will be, let's see, the rough draft is due Sunday the 22nd. The peer review is due the following week and then your final paper will be due August 5th. Okay, all right. I hope this helps some of you that maybe needed a verbal explanation of what this project is about. Again, you have a couple of weeks to complete this, but you may not wait till the end to do it because of the peer component of this. It has to be finished with strict guidelines to the um, due date. Okay, even if your essay isn't finished, send it in any way because you will have to complete a peer review for a grade. Okay, um, email me if you have individual questions, but again, try to put those questions in the discussion board so everyone can see them. Thanks.